Good. All right. So welcome, everybody. Thank y'all for coming. Um, like most of the sessions that we do in the smart room, we are recording. If you ever see the blue on these little microphones in here, that means that we are recording this session. If it's red, it means we're not. Um, so I'm going to post this on the Professional Development Blackboard site after we're done. We are live streaming into Harnett and into Pittsburgh. So we do have some people on the other campuses. And if anyone wanted to watch remotely, it's being offered on the CCCC Life Science website. I don't know if do anyone any good unless they already took the assessment and just couldn't be here, but that is an option. So um, just remember everything that you said. You can hear whisper to your neighbor. Sometimes I can hear these little microphones. Um, I can cut and edit, but just so that everyone knows that that is what we do in here. Um, and we're fortunate that we have Jessica Rogers, who is MDTI certified. Um, I've taken the assessment quite a few times, but I've never actually been trained to do the assessment. So I'm fortunate that we have somebody in-house that can do this, and we're not having to pay a trainer to come in and give us a full day worth of MBTI. But well, Jessica has been fortunate that she's done this. This is the second time, and every time I've heard great <laughs> So I think that she's already gotten her money the college, but um, Jessica, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask when she um, is ready for those. And anybody on the other campuses, if you have questions, just raise your hand and I'll let Jessica know that there's a question coming in from the other campuses. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Jessica as she gets started. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy that you all decided to spend basically most of your afternoon with me. I do apologize that it's so lengthy. I was just um, sharing that this is simply a four hour training that we've condensed down to two and a half and I might even have gotten it right at two. So please forgive me if it seems like I'm rushing. I just want to make sure you get the bulk of the or the meat of the information because kind of the last two hours are mainly activity and putting your type preferences into play. So for those of you that are on our other campuses, I just want to say I apologize. You don't have your physical copy, but I do have it with me. You will receive it in our office mail, and I'm going to also send you an email copy of your results. So I do apologize you don't have it. And anything I pass out today, you will receive in your inner office mail envelope. So again, I'm Jessica Rogers. I am the director of TRIO Student Support Services Programs. We are the program that works with the students who are currently enrolled. That's just the easiest way to know which one is SSS. We're located over in Hockaday Hall. I always have to get my shameless plug. You know any students who may be eligible, please send them over. We are always willing and welcome to help. And you should forget, your results are in a wonderful packet that has our information. <laughs> um, I've been here since the grant was funded in 2015. And one of the things that we saw, and actually the U.S. Department of Education saw a need for more intense services in career development. And that's what sparked for me to get trained in MBTI. The U.S. Department of Education gave us a little extra money. We jumped on it by having somebody in-house who could provide not only the tests, but provide true interpretations of them to help our students better select their majors, degree fields, certificates, so that they will stick with it and can finish. So it goes right along with our maps. And so that was just really kind of great that it happened all simultaneously. And what happened is that I did a week long worth of intensive training with tests every day, all about the MBTI. I learned more about myself in that week <laughs> than I was prepared. I'm thinking I'm just gonna be reading and learning about the test, but really I was kind of in your shoes learning from that angle. So it was really good. It was really great to learn it that way because I'm a counselor by trade. I have a degree in counseling. So to see it some another way was like, wow, wait, that's not what they taught us exactly, but this is really helpful. This is really more meaningful for me. So we're just going to get started. Again, here's just my credentials, who I am, how you contact me, in case you want to just tell me everything I told you was not true. Um, but that's my information. And just today, we're going to just really just discuss things that you really should already know about yourself. We're just putting them into nice little capsules to say, this is more of your preference. This is kind of what your behavior is telling us about you. And this is how you interact in certain situations. Sometimes we don't know this is how we're reacting. This is how it looks when types work together and when they don't. Kind of when we're in conflict, not just with ourselves, but, you know, with other people too sometimes. And remember, this is just summarizing just again, your preferences. And so a lot of times people say, I am an E. And really you, you prefer an E. That, that's just the preferred behavior. That's what's natural for you. So that's, you'll hear me use the word preference a lot. That's just because 
in that wonderful training, I learned that it's a preference. It's not I am. It is because at any moment you can be anything. And which I thought that was really great, you know, to learn that, you know, you aren't stuck here and you must do this. But oftentimes we are told that. So that's really good. And also just confirming your best fit. So just because your results come back in the this type does not mean that that's really what happened. Because what I will honestly say, I noticed that most of you took them during the day yesterday. That means you took them in the mindset that you were an employee. You took them thinking about your job. You took them thinking about how you respond to your coworkers, your supervisor, and things like that. So that means that you weren't in your natural state. So it's possible that this is not your best fit. Because your best fit is how you are everywhere. Because ironically, we are the same person. You know, we don't switch it up. We may switch duties, but not who we are. And then also just experiencing type through activities. So I do have one activity, well, about two activities that I hope I can squeeze in. Personality is really just your innate abilities, things that are just naturally within you. Just how if someone says something funny, you may make a face versus laugh. That's just something natural within you. You didn't learn mm -hmm. that. You just naturally do that. You know, or if somebody maybe burps instead of you saying, oh, are you okay? You may just, it may be another response to that. It isn't something you learn. It's just something you naturally do. It, and it may be weird. It may be awkward, but it's just who you are. So those are just kind of your innate things in your personality. And, and kind of people may belch out loud versus they don't. So that's something that you did learn. You learned that you need to keep it in and you don't do that in public. And then others have maybe did not learn that because it was open in their home or where have you. So those are just kind of some of those inborn characteristics versus the ones that we're learning based on our outside environment. Or really kind of for me, I know my characteristics, my behavior is based on how I was reared as a child. Like I always go back to the things that they, my parents said, and it's what it's like they're ingrained in my head all the time. It's like, oh no, you should not do that because that is not appropriate. So, but I'm learning that, mm, but that isn't who I am. That's not what I always typically want to do. And that's okay. And so we have the young theory, which you've probably heard about. Yes, because I know you're in that psychology class. So yes, it goes right along with psychology. And the young theory is just basically all about personality. That's what he did. He studied it. He learned it. He studied people's behaviors, where they were in different places, different types of people. You're assertive. You're aggressive. You're shy. Just all of those. He studied that to help kind of bring that was kind of the foundation of where Myers Briggs came from, which is really good, especially if you're in that psychology world. You're like, oh, young, yeah, that's what he does, Carl Young. So, but it's basically the MBTI is how you gather your information, how you're taking it in, how you are re energizing yourself, or how your energy is depleted. That's what the actual assessment was trying to figure out what it is, what, what depletes you, what energizes, what motivates you. That, those are what the questions were. So if you think back about them, they probably seem very repetitive. That's because they want to guarantee that that is what really you meant. Because it, sometimes, again, we try to put ourselves in roles versus thinking of ourselves as a whole. And then basically everyone has a preferred way of taking in information, utilizing energy. It's in preferred meaning it's your most natural way that you aren't even paying attention, that that's how you're doing it. And so that... Also, personality type observes the two worlds that we live in. We have the outer world where people, things, and activities, and that is just basically, that is, I don't want to say that because we're jumping ahead, but basically it's the, the people around us, the loud environment, it could be just going to the fair, things like that, or they are enjoyable for you, and then your inner world are just your own ideas and thoughts. Just really just that, if you are pre-thinking of situations, if you are pre-developing ideas. So Young is just saying that again, this all develops what your, what your personality is, preference, excuse me. So we have what's called inborn predisposition and things that go a certain way, which that goes right back to how we kind of gather in information and what is already kind of innately within us. So one of the things that um, my sister would probably say is that I'm innately loud. Like when I speak, this is the tone I speak at all times, typically. So if you ever see me walking by, this is probably the tone I'm going to speak to you. This is not something new that I'm doing just because I'm presenting. This is the tone. I talk to my staff in the staff meeting, so I'm innately loud. She's an able kind of soft-spoken. She, she has to speak up to be in my tone, where I have to consciously speak 
no words to speak at her tone. So those are just kind of some of the things. And so she always tells me all the time, gosh, you're so loud. I'm thinking, no, you're so soft. I can't hear you. Like, can you speak up? And so it's, it's just, that is just who we are innately. Those are just some of our informed preferences. And that's really what the MBTI is going to talk about. It's going to talk about nature versus um, nature. So I'm sorry, that's not not the same word. But basically, it's going to talk about your environment versus who you are internally. And so builds, and the theory just builds upon Young's theory, MBTI does. It builds upon, because what Myers Briggs did is they took that theory and they decided, well, we want to take it a step further. We want to know how do we act in conflict? How do we act in very extremely exciting moments? Not just, or how do we act in work? How do we versus home? How does that relate to each other? Those types of things. So that's what it means by taking it a step further. And it describes an opposite pair. So that's why you have the E and the I. Why is it not the E and the P? Well, the E and the I are the two that they just decided to compare because typically if you are this way, then there are other things that you are absolutely not preferring to do when you're in certain situations. And then the MBTI also says, assessment is designed to indicate our inborn preferences, which I thought that was very interesting because typically those are not the things that we always display. What we display is what we're taught, not what is typically inborn. So I thought that was really interesting how a set of questions, which were a nice long 90, taught us about those inborn preferences. And then MTI also, the assessment is not designed to measure skills and effects of the environment. So what it means, like for instance, if you have a, I'm just gonna say if I have a student, so I work with students with disabilities, and today their disability was really presenting itself, then the MBTI would not be able to basically measure their true personality preference because they have something in their environment that is triggering them to act outside of their informed preference. Which I know that sounds really odd because you're thinking the disability is them. Is them. However, it is something, it is in balance. It is in balance to their personality. So it, it will not always measure out the same for everyone. Some people say, I've taken it at this age, and this was my um, four-letter preference, and then I took it at this age, and this is my four-letter preference. And sometimes it's just more who you are more comfortable with, you know, where you were in your life. Because if you were here in an unhappy marriage, and you were here outside of that marriage that you were unhappy in, just imagine how your personality is going to be different and how it will present itself. Because here you may be masking your who you really are to make the environment happy versus your inborn needs. So those are just some of the things that what they're really telling us that happens. So I'm not going to do that. So right now, as we've been talking about inborn preferences, and everyone in the other campus, I'm going to hope that you have a sheet of paper with you. If not, I have another activity that you can do. So I'm going to pass out this nice small packet. And actually, I'm going to have you turn it face down. I should turn it face down for you. Okay. All right, and so when you turn it over, I want you to write your name in that first blank box at the top of the page. Mm -hmm. And it would be very obvious. And as if you all have pieces of paper, just write your name and then just look up once you're finished. Okay, great. Now I want you to switch hands and write your name in the next blank box. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, switch hands. That's not working. Yeah, Wait a minute, y'all haven't looked up yet. I'm not understanding. Y'all still writing? <laughs> yes. You finished? Okay, great. So tell me, how did it feel to write your name on the first box? Uh, yeah, good. Would anybody else describe? Can they describe how it felt to write the name the first time? You probably didn't do it with your eyes closed, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we wrote it the second time. How did that feel? Well, first of all, it took you longer. I'm going to tell you that. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it, it did? Yes. Did anybody else want to? How did it feel? Backwards. Can't um, concentrate more. You moved a little slower. Did it feel natural? No. Did it feel, did it feel like something you could do with your eyes closed? Could you no. stay inside your box? No. That's what it feels like when you're operating outside of your preference. That's what it feels like when we say 
something isn't right. I'm like, I'm, this isn't me. I'm, I'm not being me right now. That's literally what the feeling. So what I'm gonna have you all also do is just let's fold our arms. Everybody got their arms folded? Now unfold them and fold them the, with the other hand on top. I don't even think I can do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what the inborn preference is. That's what we mean. Inborn meaning, this is your preference. This is the natural way I want my arms folded. This is how I feel comfortable. That's when I'm operating in my inborn preference behavior. This is this is what feels comfortable. I don't even think I can. It feels weird. Oh my goodness, it feels like I'm about to break my arms. It's just not right. So that's just, I wanted to give you all a physical example of what it feels like. So people on my other campus, if you all could, on the bottom of your page, draw yourself four boxes, and if you all will flip your page. Four boxes. No. Just four boxes, yes. What we're gonna do is as we go through, well, I want you all to guess what your type is as we go through when we talk about the different types. <laughs> So that's just basically what they are. Everybody probably remembers the E and the I, the introversion, the extroversion, the sensing and intuition, the thinking and feeling, and the judging and perceiving. Those are your different types that you're kind of like either or. And then type versus trait. Type identifies your inborn preferences. That's why we say type. Your trait is just what you have developed based on your environment. That's just really kind of a simple way to identify them for these purposes. And then really your trace is played based on <laughs> what you do at work. And my always my example is that I like supervising, but it's a lot of questions. And when I'm in a certain preference, it can be overwhelming. But it is a lot of it's a lot of problem solving when you're a supervisor. And that means that you are using one of your preferences more than what you may use another. And so depending on your preference, that will make you feel like you're crossing your arms the wrong way. So this is just a nice little graph that just kind of shows where type theory and trait theory are and where your normal scores and things like that. But then you'll see that later in your um, results. All right, so um, introversion and extroversion are simply how we receive energy, which I know it seems like, no, when we've heard probably culturally in classrooms, it was those who talk a lot and those who are quiet. So I want you to embrace that because you can be either one and talk a lot and be quiet because you will be very surprised on what your results are going to probably tell you. But basically, people who are intro, extroverts, excuse me, I don't know why I want to say introvert first, they're energized by interacting with others. It's probably why we think that extroverts are people who speak a lot. That's, that's not true. Extroversion can be anyone. And let me start off with the definitely the statement, we need all types to make anything work properly. You need everyone to balance ideas and balance the office. And it's really great if you are able to have a representation of almost all if you have a large enough office, but at least a good combination. Because when you have them all in the same, that means you're all going to have deficits in the same area. And you want somebody else who can say, yeah, maybe we shouldn't. So just keep that in mind as we go through. And the introversion people, they, they like to energize by opportunity to reflect. So that's why people often think that introversion preferences are people who are quiet. That's not necessarily true. They, they just may want to take a moment to think about what they're going to say as opposed to being, it's not on this one, but as opposed to being, um, to just kind of think out loud. I think that's the right way to say for an extrovert. Extrovert may have an issue at end and may say, hey, let me talk to you. I have a challenge. And they will even talk to you about the entire step of the way. I'm pretty sure we all know somebody like that who has an issue and they're saying, okay, Daisha, so you know, they send me the email and I email them back and then no response. And I'm not really sure if that meant that they are not happy with it, but I'm really concerned because they should have emailed me back by now. However, had it been an introvert saying that, they'll just get the email and you'd never know. <laughs> you recognize that? Yeah, and you're like, they're over there having an internal war inside, but externally they're just cool and calm. You don't even know. You're thinking, oh, it didn't even bother you. However, your extroversion is going to verbally say 
what's going on because they're they're just a socially interactive just a verbally telling everybody what's going on because they just operate outside and however you're interested they want to reflect they want to take a moment aside they need to recharge because just because they had that internal war they need a moment to recharge that battery because they don't want to fall apart say the wrong thing they don't they don't want to think about the next steps that happen after they say it all out so they're just going to take a moment i think we all could take a moment for um but they prefer writing and communication so if you have a staff member or co-worker who is maybe your extrovert preference they're going to send you an email and it's going to be two lines however your introvert is going to give you a nice long tip paragraph explaining everything because they don't want you to come back and ask them a question because that means that they're going to have to interact more. and they want to be able to give it all to you at once which is great however your extrovert is going to maybe forget because they're ready to talk to you about it they want to Come over to my desk, let's talk about it. So that those are just some of the things that you have to be respectful about. That that's just the difference in the way people communicate. And we have to learn that, okay, she's getting what she needs right now. And then later I'll just send her an email on what I needed. And that's how we're gonna communicate. And it's totally okay once you set up those boundaries and you recognize that that's what's happening. And then also you get to work out ideas, that's what we're saying right there by talking, your extroverts. They're gonna work all ideas out by that. Whether it's planning a trip outfit the next day what they're going to eat anything if it's an idea they like to talk about it and then you know of course they're going to be socially appropriate you know when it's not appropriate to talk about it they're not but however you also can have that person equally balancing those preferences you know knowing when there are moments where they're actually reflecting they're not giving they that moment of solitude they take their lunch by themselves because they need that moment but when they come back they're just as chattering because they had their moment to recharge that battery and now they're back. So you have a little bit of both. I see you right there laughing. You almost know some people like that. So I'll talk a little bit further on what people prefer. If they're introvert, extrovert, and um, preference. And so broader interests, just a variety of things. Whereas your introversion may be a little bit more focused. They may have a fewer interests, fewer things such as that, because that's just what they prefer. That's all it is. However, you may need an extrovert that has fewer interests because they may be slight in their preference. And then also they're readily take initiative and work in relationship situations. So have you ever worked with someone, because we don't work with people like this here, that the moment the problem is there, they're ready to go address it, not the, take a moment, where's your plan? You know, what because there there was more to it. What's the backstory? You know, they don't necessarily want to dig in, they're just ready, let's go talk to them. I mean, I just I don't know why they didn't work out. I need to go talk to them. And that, that could be sometimes your extrovert preference, just because they have a need to verbally decide on things. It has nothing to do with them not respecting the space, the rules, the culture. It's just it's just an inborn preference that they have a need to just verbally talk about it. And sometimes they're just ready to just take that initiative in any any situation where there's good or bad. It could be, hey, we're all gonna plan lunch. I'm gonna be the one to tell everybody. You know, they're just ready to go ahead and get it over. Let's go ahead. Whereas your introvert preference is gonna say, okay, you go right ahead. Let me know. I'm ready. You know, whenever you are. So it's just a balance there. And they work quite well together. Um, I see that a lot in some teams that I've worked on. And when you have those two together, they balance each other out. Because you have that person who has the great ideas who will share with a few, but then you have that one that'll take it the three steps further that you needed to go. So that just works really well when you're in groups and teams. Any questions? Everybody know which one they are? All right, we have our sensing and intuition, which these two are really, they sound very like they might be the same. They may be close, but actually they're very different. Your sensing preference, they tend to focus on what's real, what's tangible, what's right here, not necessarily what could be. Your people with intuition, they do more things on meaning of patterns and data and you know what they can calculate and figure out, that type of thing. So again, they, they sound similar, but they can be very different. And your sensing preference, they're gonna trust experience. Over here, they're gonna do trust inspiration. Like I, I feel inspired to, you know, let's just take that leap. Let's just take that chance. Not, I've done that several times and it didn't work. It's, I'm just gonna try it again. And I think we all know a lot of people like that. We often think of maybe our younger selves, maybe in that area. For instance, I know I moved a couple of times and didn't have jobs. I just did it. Like, oh, it worked out. Now, now it's kind of like, I'm too scared. My experience has taught me don't do that. But 
had I taken the MBTI when I was in those moments of, I just want to try that city, I probably, you know, would have been definitely in my, um, in preference for that. And so also on the sensing preference, the people um, tend to prefer understanding, excuse me, understand ideas and theories through practical applications as opposed to your people in your end preference or intuition preference. Who wants to clarify ideas and theories and putting them before, excuse me, before putting them into practice, which to me are just, again, just showing you how they're just real, real opposites here. So I see, I think I saw most of y'all write stuff down. So I want to make sure I'm being mindful of time. Everybody have a, you know, if they are in or um, S preference, okay. All right, your thinking and your feeling. So I will say it's typically not anything like a thinking and your feeling, like they want to touch you. It's not quite like that. Your, your T and your F are more of your, they analyze versus empathize. And so, when I say you really need that, when you're making decisions that involve our students, you need your people who are going to analyze, and then you need your people who are going to empathize. Because I can just give you a great example of we were doing a student trip, and I said if they have not responded by this time, they will not be able to go. However, my entire staff said, but what if they're from, what if they didn't get the email? You know, sometimes emails just don't go through. We need to make sure everybody, we've got to call a few of them. And I'm thinking, absolutely not, we need the numbers now, because I need to be able to budget that and send that paperwork through. There, no. And had I listened, had I not listened to them, we wouldn't have had the large turnout that we did. So that's that's just a good example for me of why we need both preferences at all times. And that you always need, because I always say, your people who are in your feeling preference, they're your, but what if? But why not? What about, how do you think that makes them feel? Those are your people who are asking those questions. But they're asking that in every possible way. You know, I just don't think that's going to work because that's going to hurt our students or that's going to make a difference in how she feels or how she acts or how they keep interacting. Like, we don't want to crush them. So that's those are your um, F preferences. However, your T preferences, they're going to be on that cause and effect reasoning. They're going to be that this is the bottom line. This is what we have to do. This is our deadline. We, we, don't, we don't quite have time to wait for that. However, your F preference is going to just try to make sure you remember and us not waiting, what does that really mean? So to me, they're they're not, you know, the ones they're gonna, they're, I mean, yes, your F preferences probably are gonna pat you on the back and say, come on, you can do it, you can really wait, it's okay. You know, they are, but your, your T preference over there is gonna say, but the bottom line is, it's time, like this is what, this is a matter of fact, cause and effect. If we don't do this, then this is gonna happen. So just keep that, but again, you need both. And just kind of really the, the bottom line is, is that they're going to use problem solve, solve problems with logic and they're going to assess impacts of decision on people. Did I switch this again? So again, here's um, how they make decisions, which we kind of just briefly touched on. Your T, they're still reasonable. They're not stubborn. They're reasonable because they're doing that cause and effect. However, they can be seen as tough-minded meaning that once they already have the idea in their mind or kind of what needs to happen, they're kind of stuck on that unless it can be proven otherwise. And it can be tough because if you're in your F preference strong that day, you do not understand why they're not saying, why they're not seeing that it can hurt others or that it's not the part of the great big picture. It's just this one incident. So they can be seen as tender heart of your F people. They can. And it's not a negative thing, it's just kind of how they're really making decisions. They're going to really think of how this is going to affect, maybe the whole family, like if you're in your family role. Like if I do this, that means that my child won't be able to go here because I've taken this one here. Mm -hmm. So they're going to think about that as opposed to say, well, I've already promised this one first, so that's the one who needs to go to skating. This one will just have to sit here with me and read this book. You know, so they're not going to do that. They're going to think of everybody, how that's going to affect everybody because that's what works best for them in their preference. That's why I said you can flop from preference to preference depending on your situation. It's which one feels most natural to you. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Everybody write down whether they're a T or an F. All right. So, yeah. Excuse me. 
Could have jumped to that. Okay. So then you have your J and your P. You're judging and perceiving. So it's not that you're judgmental, and it's not that you're perceiving that other people are judgmental. It's not that. It's you are really just kind of how you see that's how we're, which I thought this one was really interesting. See how they're just one words? They're not the little lengthy little statements there. Your judging preference, they tend to like to follow a schedule. They organize their lives and their various <laughs> And then you have your perceiving ones where they're spontaneous, flexible. They're the ones that are kind of like how I was describing myself as a young person. Just get up and go to the city, you know, job, just kind of ready to make it happen. Um, casual and open-minded. Open -minded. So your judging preferences are your ones that are going to be kind of who are making the schedule for the office, reminding everybody of the deadlines. They're going to be the ones that organize just not just their lives, but they're going to try to help you organize yours. And then there are then you're gonna have your other people who are just as beneficial to the group, who are spontaneous, you know, like you're in the middle of a meeting, y'all like deep in a discussion, and they're gonna, oh my goodness, I have this idea. And you're like, wait, that you know, your your J over there is gonna say, wait, that is not on the agenda. I need you to stay focused. I take it you know about that. And and it will take you completely on it makes you uncomfortable because you're thinking we have a set schedule. And I think I can kind of pick out some of my J's because I think two people came up to me to remind me. I'm going to leave it three. I just want you to know because I need you to know my schedule because I'm working on first. <laughs> so, but it's natural because that's what, that was just what you wanted to, you know, what you needed to do because you were organized your life. You need to make sure other people are being respectful of that. Your, your people in your P, they probably were thinking, oh, y'all leaving at three, but that's okay. I'm just going to stop. That's what I'm wondering. You know, they're just like, it's okay. You know, she'll, she'll notice I'm leaving when I'm walking out, you know. Not being rude, just thinking, oh, you know, it, it'll happen. You know, just let it, let it flow, and that's fine. However, <laughs> however, you know, the flexibility allows for the J to be able to be in their preference because your P's over here are flexible. They, it does not bother them that you need that because they're flexible. They're like, you need a schedule. I'll let you get your schedule together. I'll sit over here probably read something on my phone. Whenever you're ready for us to move on, we'll move on because they're flexible like that. They're not, they don't need that, that strength, that time frame or what have you. But they also don't need to interrupt you while you do it because they're flexible. They're kind of casual about it. So also right here in your, how they're viewing the outside world is that they adapt to your, um, your piece, they adapt to change really easily. So uh, if y'all know about Trio, Trio moves around in their offices a lot. I've had two offices been in three locations since I've been here in 2015. So we have to be flexible over there. And that, that has a lot to do with other stuff, not like anything with college, but that's other stuff that our needs happen. But that that was hard on some of the team because that was not an organized plan. It was just kind of one day I said, so guys, we're gonna be put out for about a month. And some of their eyes were like, wait, where, where we're going, what's gonna happen? You know, they needed me to be able to reaffirm that we had a plan, this wasn't permanent, and what was gonna happen. Now granted, if I was in my P preference that day, I probably just said, just roll with it. We're still here. We're just gonna see these students wherever we are. But that's not gonna work. I had I needed to be able to lean on my J preference and room, get organized and say, this is the timeline for what's gonna happen. Because that being flexible does not work in every situation, or being cash I should say, does not work in every situation. Sometimes you have to bring, bring order to reassure not just your team, your coworkers, but sometimes your students that this is going to work out. Because when you're helping them advise them, get their accounts together, you can't be casual about that, that's very serious. So you have to be able to lean on both preferences. And over here, your J, which is awesome. When we're talking about a college environment, that last minute stuff, we know that never works out great. Sometimes you get those chances where, okay, it did work out. That's not where you want to leave. So that's where your J preference is really going to be helpful for you. They're going to remind you of those deadlines in the meetings. They're going to put the deadlines on the agenda for you. They're going to email out and remind you you're on their group. This is the deadline. And that's what you need. You need those, those J's. The, however, over here, these find the last minute pressures energizing. So you have to figure out how that works for you. That's not going to work in every situation, <laughs> the last minute things. However, it will. you can figure out how that works for you. You know, you'll figure out your to-do list and you'll prioritize it on what you need to do first because they have the deadline and what you can wait to last minute to still feed into your P preference. All right, so everybody has their 
basically estimate, get guess type. I'm not gonna say estimate, that's. And so just to remind you that there are 16 different personality types and we all at any moment could possibly be any of them. And that just means that you could be a slight. That means that you were not strong in your preference and you could just be slight in it. So that's why we say at any moment you could be any of them. So right here, I'm going to pass out your, your assessment. Um, what you got? I'm an introvert. Well, it's okay. I'm an introvert. What are you for the others? I don't know what you're making. I'm an Totally opposite of me. <laughs> I'm an INFP. INF what? I'm going to give you a moment so you can look and see what your type is. And what this is, and just as you're looking, I just want you to know this is called your best fit, meaning this is the one that you consistently, how you consistently answered your questions. And so what you're looking at is, did she say Anne was in there? Did Anne say something? No. Anne, are you over there? Anne's here. I'm here. Okay. Just in case you have, do you mind if I use your assessment as what I hold up? Go ahead. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So what I have here is, you know, just a cover page, just because assessments are to be private unless you have someone that agrees to let someone else see. And so the second page, and you are INP, excuse me, FP. Oh, that's exactly what I write down on this page. Oh, awesome! So what you have is just right here. It's just telling you which one, what's your preference. It just gives you the name of it. And this is just a brief summary of how your preferences are working together. What this should say about you. And then on your next page, here is just talking a little bit more about what we went over and just giving you a little bit more, it just highlighted it, just put it in a nice little graph for you. But this is what we've already went over. And then this next one, which to me is the, one of the more important ones, it talks about how your type works in conflict, how it works when your type is in a happy place. And I know it isn't telling you that, so I'm gonna dissect it for you in a minute. And then I'm going to flip really quickly to the to the next page, which is the mental processes, which I thought was really interesting because it gave you the basically in the order in which your type likes to work based on how you answer the questions, which it, it's just a fun way of looking at your four letter result. And then here, the, this to me is the most important page in which all of you do have, it clarifies your results. So in other words, it's telling you how strong you scored on your test or assessment, I'm sorry. And so are you laughing because yours really strong over there? And so for some people, you may be what's called a slight, meaning that you may have been reared one way but your preference is to be another way or you're like, like let's say you joined the military that forces you to act one way but your preference is to be another way and so therefore that's what a slide would be if you are in moderate means that you're pretty you're getting closer to clear and it just means that again sometimes you may still flop back and forth depending on situations because your your preference may be another way but you have learned to be okay in acting in another and then if you are absolutely clear and very clear, it just means that you are acting in the way that your preferences want you to act. You are totally in what your inborn preferences are asking of you. You don't feel uncomfortable with some of the things that were required of you. So that's good. None of this is bad. None of it is like, ooh, you're about to change jobs. It is just simply telling you about who you are and how your preferences are acting within each other. So. What I have also in your book here, in your folder, which all of you, again, all of you all will have since you enter office mail, it breaks down a little bit further about your types. It tells you about characteristics, 
So it just tells you some just some traits that just kind of go along with your four letter preference. And then how others may see you, which I thought was really good because we may not always be aware that others see us in certain lights or just in any way possible. And the areas of potential growth, that right there is what I thought was really helpful when we were being trained because it taught me when I'm in conflict with my type preference that this is basically how I act when I'm upset. And I thought that was pretty interesting because I was like, yep, that's me. That That's all me right there. So I thought that was really helpful. And, and it's just kind of, um, if you've ever taken a psychology class, and it's okay if you haven't, it tells you, um, one of our um, theorists says that if you Freud, I believe, if you don't successfully move out of certain stages of growth, you kind of stay there. You don't skip it. So if you don't move out of your adolescent stage, as we know, we know some people who still act like teens and they're full grown adults because they didn't successfully transition out of a stage of growth. So they're still there until they successfully move. It's kind of like school used to be. Um, so it's just like that in your type. If you don't develop your feeling type, but you are a feeling preference, and you're kind of still very weak in that area. You're not displaying it fully, but you're not displaying the other side either. That's just, so I thought that was interesting piece of information. So I'll give you 30 more seconds to just kind of keep looking because I know it's really interesting. And one of the things that it will you will notice within reading it is that it will say potential blind spots. So they use really positive words versus saying when you're angry or things like that. So in other words, when you are being emotional, we'll call it that, then you won't notice that other you're, you're being combative with your other preferences because you're in an emotional state. So remember we said this works only when you're in kind of a natural, your natural state. And typically high emotions is not a natural state, typically for people. I just noticed the screen over there changed. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> okay, but um, so I, as you're looking at your best fit, your reported type plus your best fit, it just kind of, if they were different, then it just means that that combined, they equal your best fit. Because what you did on your test or assessment there is what you reported to the assessment, which you did. But what you listened to and you really thought about who you were and everything, then that was what you felt was your best type. So then putting it together would be a best fit. Would you say yours was dead on? Um, there was one letter off. You think so? Okay. Yeah, but it just, the one that was off is the one that I was the least clear on. I'm like, ah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else like that? Like one letter off, but you weren't that clear in it when you read through? It's pretty cool. So also what that could mean, so it means if you were a slide, again, like I was saying, um, most people who know me, meet me or kind of get to know me probably guess that I'm an extrovert. I totally all in it. I'm only slightly an extrovert. Um, I really do lean on, I need moments to re-energize. I don't answer my phone after eight o'clock at night. I refuse to talk to people at night um, because I need moments to sit back, reflect, and pull it together with me. a high energy person. So it, it's funny that because I, I walked around for a long time saying I am a full preference extra. You couldn't tell me anything different, but it's not true. The older I get, the more I see. I enjoy my rides home sometimes in silence um, because I need moments just to bring it back together to calm my thoughts. So. It, it's true, and I realized that my mother was a full extrovert, and I mimicked her a lot. Because I was the oldest girl, um, so I could see where I was picking up traits. But I realized that what I preferred was not being an extrovert. I prefer not being the one talking all the time, and so that was that was interesting. That's what I learned really big about myself was that wow, who knew? I thought I was all the way an extrovert. So again, this is just the um, type table again, just to remind you that they all fall under the same premise. I'm getting it too fast. All right. So basically, Isabella Myers, her goal for this was to basically for you to become aware of the differences and acknowledge the value of the differences that 
everybody is needed, every type is needed, and that they all work together differently. And that the practice, the new behaviors, you see got people who are different from us and to incorporate different perspectives into our interactions, which is really, I thought, nice that that's what she was thinking about when she was making the Myers-Briggs and that's what she was really feeling that would help just people in general work together. And then to capture the learnings, the insights, the gain, um, gain insights about yourself and other people that have opposite preferences, which is really helpful, again, when you're working with a group, it's really nice to know what their preferences are. And I, I always pick on my team, so if you know my team, you'll, you'll, they know I pick on them all the time. Um, we have one really strong um, eye in our office, and I know with all those E's floating around, it drives their eye bananas. Um, they often take breaks. <laughs> they often, um, they need moments of solitude, but now that I know that, I can respect that, because before I thought, oh my God, like, they never want to sit at their desk. What's happening here? But that was my true, me trying to be that true me coming out. And that, um, but that wasn't the case. That was just a need of, I need to re-energize. Y'all were depleting me quickly. So that, that, I thought that was great that we had that understanding early on. But also the biggest thing is right here is that when my, um, my spontaneous side of me pops out, I have to recognize that my team isn't like that. That, that does not work well for everybody. And so therefore I have to find ways to, to still get that, meet that preference, but not impose it on others. So understanding introversion, extroversion and introversion, we're going to, I mean, if y'all don't mind, can I ask who are my um, I's and who are my E's? And that goes the same for, which I can't see you guys, but that goes the same for um, you all. If you could split up in a group of I's and E's, that would be good. Or are you all E's over here? I'm I'm Are you an E? We're now. Okay. We're eyes. Oh my. We're eyes. We're eyes. She is split. <laughs> do y'all have different eyes and E's over there? Yeah. So what we're gonna do in our group project, because I like to call it that, um, is really just try to think of right here what it says. Think of questions that you would like to ask the opposite preference, and that's any question that's appropriate for this environment. Um, and we're going to just say three. <laughs> Did you guys hear me? Yes. 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 So let the spokes spokesperson, and we'll go from there. Now you got to start somewhere. I know. And do you need me? I can be. I can meet you too. Okay. All right. And we're gonna give you like a, a minute. <laughs> No, okay, so now I'm going to have your spokesperson kind of, kind of report out or ask the question of the other group. So since you are a larger group, this could be the two or more questions that we may have. So if we can get the eyes, because I just want to make you uncomfortable, to ask the question of the E's, that would be great. And your question is simply something that you want to know so you can better understand them better. Let's see what is it. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you ever feel like you need a long time? Mm -hmm. Need a long time? Yeah. Every day. Really? Yeah. <laughs> 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 really? That's what it is. I love solitary. Me too. Sometimes. Extra work doesn't mean you like people. I don't either. But, but extra work doesn't mean it, it, you like people. It doesn't. <laughs> it means you can interact. I can be by myself. I agree. Totally. I um, watch it on my TV when I need it on time. Something that isn't open on the emotion or thoughts. Something new. Whatever the situation, I like cheesy. So, I'm angry. I watch it every time it comes on TV. So, but I'll do something like that. Well, I don't think it's why would you rather, but do you rather 
when it comes to solving problems. Um, you don't trust yourself and it's a lot more than I trust myself. No, but I don't know. So, would y'all say that's what it is? Okay, that's what I was going to say. So now you can explain it. I didn't think so. It is for me. It is for you. Oh, you trust yourself that much? So. Well, that's what I mean. It's like, I don't know. I would rather. But I'm you answer it. the question, baby. Mm. Yeah. He's a happy kid. Yeah. Like it's all stuff. Like okay. Problem solved. Thank you, Lee. You're welcome. It'll be bad. <laughs> he will be a happy man when you get home. Don't like group projects. His day's planned and he's got a good I don't like relying on others to pay on Thursday nights. I got money. It's good. I laugh because that's me and that's who I always take to teach That should be. Yeah, he's a big one. He is, he is. So he's getting a dog tonight. It's fine here. Fine, you can be in one moment. Okay, what you have a question? I've got a question to ask you. It's like they chat. But mm -hmm. I agree that I don't like root projects. But it makes it like hard for you to make a decision about oh, everybody else. Not, 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 can not, I say extrovert, not, extrovert, not the ease, but I'm just saying, in general. I'm in a decision. It's hard for me to make a decision. I try to think about the different things that each decision impacts. Whereas, trusting others is hard. Well, there you go. Okay. And, and I'm so saying, like, all these things are like, are. It's like a giant album. That's my job. And that's what I want to do. I have to be happy. You know. I do it. So there you go. Now he's just a giant album. It's messed up. That's why you had to talk about everything. If you make a decision, as long as there's just so much to consider, all the others. She makes herself crazy oh, doing that. I slap me in the face. And that's why, you know, I'm here with my hands. Yes. I'm sure it does. Yes. It's all small. And a few people slap me in the face. I would say definitely uh, that I believe on my e preference with that is that I um I like to talk it out. Like that, that is me all day and I'm looking if I'm driving crazy with that, but I need to do that. Because I like the reassurance that it's the right direction because I don't like to redo it. <laughs> no, I don't like to no. that's, 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 But I'd like to know that I'm going to be going somewhere soon. <laughs>